Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And today I am so happy to bring someone on the show who I've known for a long time. I uh, knew him before you know my health uh, you know problems that started up in 2010 with my aneurysm and has been he's been a friend of mine a supporter of mine and we've come close you know i mean we've worked together on a couple projects uh and uh, and been friends for years and actually he got me my first foot in the door in comic books and for that he will always be one of my dearest friends mark polton please say hello to everyone and let them know where they can find you on social media hey guys uh so you can find me on uh Twitter and Instagram at Coney Waves. That was the name of my first comic book. Um, that's spelled K O N I W A V E S. Um, you can also find me on Indiegogo, where I always seem to have a uh, a campaign going. Right now, I have Graveyard Shift Volume Three. Uh, we're in the first thirty days of our campaign, so uh, make sure you go check it out. Awesome, yeah, and I'll put links to your Twitter account down below because you're, uh, like you said, you're at Coney Waves, but I like your name. It's Mark Primetime Polton on there, um, <laughs> and I'll also put a link to your your Indiegogo uh, because that's still running as even as this is going up right now. So if you guys are hearing this, please go check out Graveyard Shift Volume Three. It's on Indiegogo. It's your, cr- I mean, we're gonna get into it. I mean, but you're doing so well. It's uh, it's already at you know like one hundred sixty seven thousand dollars, and it's still climbing. Um, the first two volumes, if you guys didn't pick those up, there is a tier that you can donate to and get all three volumes and and, and more. Like there's you got you got the bite size heroes and the and the supplemental stuff. And let me tell you guys, this is we're gonna get into what this book is, but it's like it's like the Universal Monsters as the X Men, and it's it's so freaking cool. And Mark. You know, I, I uh, contributed to one of the Indiegogos, I think, for Volume 2, and you were nice enough to still send me Volumes 1 and 2 and some other stuff, and we're going to talk about all that today. So thank you for being on the show, man, and thanks for continuing to make great comic books. Oh, no, uh, thank you, man. It's uh, it's great to talk to you. Uh, we've been, you know, friends for so long, but I feel like we haven't seen each other in, in such a long time, so it's nice to uh, connect and, and talk. Yeah, absolutely. I um. I think we met, I think you, it was my second, I think, Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con that I went to. I want to say it was maybe 2005 or six, and you and I met, um, I think, at the Arcana booth, and you were just releasing Coney Waves, like you said. Uh, so, you know, before we get into that real quick, let's talk a little bit about, you know, where your love for comics comes from, who are your biggest influences, and how did you break into comics yourself? Um. So... I've like always loved uh, superheroes and uh, cartoons. I-, I think it started um, with cartoons. Like uh, the '80s were a great time for that. We had you know Transformers, Thundercats, uh, He Man, uh, Super Friends. But my big thing was GI Joe. I was big into GI Joe. I loved the cartoon. I loved the the figures. And then one day I was watching TV. And I saw a commercial for GI Joe, and they did it so perfectly. They combined like it started off with like a cartoon, and then it rolled into uh, showing you the newest toys, and then it wrapped up with you know an advertisement for Marvel Comics saying like the adventure continues in Marvel Comics GI Joe number or whatever. And I was like, there's a GI Joe comic book. <laughs> uh, so I made my, <laughs> so I made my mom uh, look look in the the yellow pages. That's how. <laughs> Uh, long ago it was and I was like we need to find a store that I can uh, you know get comic books and we found like a bookstore in a local mall she took me there I found the issue of G.I. Joe um, and I I was hooked I got a subscription to G.I. Joe um, and that just like I dipped my toes in in comics with G.I. Joe and then just by getting a subscription I would see the advertisements for uh, Spider-Man and X-Men and then you know I started reading uh, DC comics with Batman and the Justice League, and it just it just took over from there. Uh, like the height of my fandom, though, was probably like you know early '90s when everything was blowing up. You know, you had Jim Lee on X Men, Todd McFarlane on Spider Man, and then my guy uh, Rob Liefeld on the on the New Mutants, which would become X Force. And uh, you know, you would hear before there was an internet. I mean. Yeah, there was an internet, but it wasn't really uh, as big as it was uh, as it is today. But you would hear like the buzzing on like Wizard magazine or Comic Shop Journal, or you know the, the different trade magazines. 
that uh, you know these guys were going to start their own company, uh, Image Comics, and you know I, the, the '90s get ragged on a lot. But as a as a you know a teenager who experienced like '90s comics, it was the most exciting time uh, ever. It, it just new companies popping up. Um, you know these guys just you know doing doing it themselves, uh, creating becoming their own business. It, it was amazing. So like I followed all those guys to Image. Uh, you know I loved Young Blood, uh, Brigade. Bloodshot, uh, I mean Bloodstrike, uh, Evangeline, all of those. So yeah, that's uh, you know that's like my my comic fandom. Um, it, it, those guys were the guys that inspired me and said, yeah, one day I want to make comics too. That's uh, that's so awesome. And yeah, you you mentioned some things in there like Brig- uh, Brigade and Evangeline, which you later went on to become a, a writer of, which is so awesome. So we'll, we'll get to that too. But it's so cool to hear that, you know, you make these, you made this dream of yours come true. Cause I was like you, I grew up around the same time. I know we're just like a couple, like three, maybe two, three years apart. And we grew up with the same stuff. Um, and I, again, you're right. The nineties gets ragged on a ton, but for people who grew up at that time, it was exciting because not that there weren't cool things in the 80s and there was definitely some a lot of fun stuff to read in the 80s and a lot of classic stuff in the 80s but like you said what the 90s brought was really new concepts and ideas and characters like you know a hundredfold i mean there was every week there was something new there was there was bishop and x-men and then you know and right before that there was gambit and then you know they started doing new costumes and new team lineups and then like you said the, uh, even companies like uh, these talented artists who felt they weren't appreciated as much as they, they felt they were bringing to their books were like, hey, let's go start our own thing. And that's obviously reminiscent to a lot of what's happening nowadays with uh, people kind of breaking away from mainstream comics and going out and making their own indie stuff, especially with platforms like Indiegogo and, and Kickstarter, you know, which you're using Indiegogo and stuff. And it's great. And I've used Kickstarter myself. I know we've all, all of us have done, you know, independently financed books and, and use crowdfunding to help us. And it's, it's so... I feel like w- what's exciting now is that it feels like a mirror of those times in the 90s where all these new concepts and ideas and out of the box thinking starts popping up again and and that's kind of fun and that's good to have especially during a pandemic when everything else is, you know, kind of being shut down. It's nice to see comics find new voices. Yeah, I feel like uh like even with the the pandemic uh crowdfunded comics are, are thriving right now um you know it's it's the easiest way to get your books right now because you you know some people uh might not be comfortable uh you know going to their store some stores might not even uh, allow you to, to come in you might have to just uh, pick them up by the curb but yeah the crowdfunded I, i've said it before crowdfunding is the new image comics um it's just it, it's, it's exciting time i haven't been this excited since uh you know the early 90s yeah, no, me neither. I mean, it, it's it's been kind of fun watching all these uh, these crazy ideas come out of out of people's heads, which are awesome. Because you know, and and me and you, you know, we've worked in comics before. Like I said, we met at a comic con, I think around two thousand five or six, and you were hanging out at an Arcana booth, and I was going around with like these, um, you know, probably po- very poorly written scripts, trying to like get my name out there, and you were the first person to be like, hey, yeah, I'll give it a look, you know, and and we stayed in touch and we became friends and. I will forever, you know, uh, be grateful for that friendship and the opportunities that you've, you know, there was a, a couple of books that we worked on together, you know, or like came or conceived together and came up with it and you or things you created like um, House of Ghosts that you were like, hey, do you want to come in on this with me and, and co-write it with me? And we've had all these like cool things back and forth. And honestly, it's been one of my favorite friendships. And yeah, that's why I was like so bummed. I was like, you know, I really lost touch with Mark and I feel bad. But then I'm like, but look how busy he's been. So I'm kind of like, I'm glad I didn't bother him (laughs) so he could make all these great books. And now I can uh, retouch and reconnect with him again. uh, And now that you have all this great material for me to read. So, uh, So first of all, thank you for being my friend all these years. And thanks for being just one of the most passionate people who've loved comics that I personally have ever met in the industry. Oh, uh, thank you. I, I remember that, that comic con. Oh, uh, well, it was my first comic con as a pro. It was a uh, 2006, uh, mm-hmm. San Diego comic con. Um, I was at the, the Arcana booth. I was the new guy. I was just, uh, you know, scared, uh, nervous, <laughs> excited. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Sean O'Reilly, who I, I would end up, you know, he, he became one of my biggest, uh, I guess, 
uh, influencers in in the industry. I learned a lot from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was, I think, he was tired of being bombarded with uh, questions, so he took a break and he was just like, "Mark, you you run the booth." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, that's how you and I got talking. Um, and yeah, I've always, you know. I'm a sh- I'm a quiet, shy person, but I love talking about comics. So you know, you're lucky that we. I mean, it- it's fortunate we were at a comic con. So I, I was very uh, <laughs> open and uh, more more than happy to uh, to talk with you. Um, and you you kind of reminded me of of myself. You know, I, I I've been very fortunate that you know uh, some people in the industry have you know taken a liking to me and helped me out. So you know, if I can ever pay it forward. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm more than willing, and and the cool thing that that came out of this is uh, is, is I got a good friend out of it too. So yeah, man, I, I'm so glad that you know we we ended up uh, <laughs> you know meeting each other at San Diego. I know, me too. I th- I th- I think about some of the friendships I've made in my life, and the ones that were like where it didn't seem like fate, like where it was like that. Because I feel like you, me, me meeting you, me meeting my friend Gene, like these are. These are things that I felt like were just meant to happen just because I feel like I learn a lot from you. I learn a lot from Gene and not just from storytelling, but just, you know, just everyday stuff, too. And like how, you know, how to handle yourself in a tough business and things. And it, it's it been so great. Like and I say this all the time because people ask me, they're like, oh, you know, I know you don't you kind of walked away from comics. You know, do you do you ever miss it? And I go, well, I, I do. But the second I start missing it to the point where I feel like, oh, I should have done more in the comic industry those feelings go away when I see how well people like you are doing. Cause I'm like, you know, then my friend, Ryan Katie, he was someone I worked at with at when I worked at top cow and he had just started as like a, you know, like an intern basically when I, when I was leaving there and now, you know, recently he wrote a venom annual and I'm just like, how cool is that? Like that guy, I knew that guy like six years ago, seven years ago. And now he's wrote a venom annual. I'm like, to, seeing things like that make me really happy because I, I, and seeing you with this success with like, Indiegogo and all the books you're putting out um, has made me happy. So when I tell when people ask me, I'm like, no, because I'm I'm not the jealous type. I like seeing friends succeed, and I'm so glad that um, that we get to reconnect and that I've been reading this stuff. So you sent me things like because I know you worked on before I get to this new stuff because I'm I'm so excited to get to it. But we'll let me ease into it by saying like after working with Arcana, you know, like you said, you learned a lot from Sean, and that's always good because I learned a lot from Matt Hawkins when I worked at Top Cow as far as business stuff goes, and um, and those that insight is so valuable but you went from you know doing arcana stuff with coney waves and other books that you're working on over there into working on brigade and working on evangeline and then even working with your childhood hero rob liefeld on hawkman for the new 52 what was it like going through all that and how and how was that experience kind of enriched you as a person and as a storyteller um it it, it's amazing. I mean, if you told, you know, teenage Mark that one day he would, you know, not only, you know, work for, you know, his hero, Rob Liefeld, he would work with him on, uh, you know, Hawkman at DC Comics during a big relaunch, uh, like the New 52. Uh, I would have never believed it. But <laughs> it, yeah, it's been, it's been incredible. Um, I, and it all just, you know, I, I feel like a lot of my success, uh, in comics just came because you know i took a chance and I, i'm I'll, I'll admit i'm the biggest rob liefeld fanboy there is you know <laughs> i love everything he's done and uh you know he had a mess well he he started out um uh answering like fans questions on uh uh, uh miller world mark miller's uh, right. uh message boards mm-hmm. and uh you know, it, it became, like, so big with, like, trolls attacking him. He was like, hey, guys, I'm going to just start my own message board. A- anyone who's a fan, just follow me over there. And I followed him there. And uh, it, it just became, like, one of the best, um, like, com- uh, online comic communities I've ever been a part of. Um, I met so many friends from there um, and, 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 you know, people that I, I work with now, uh, like John Malin, uh, Mike McMahon. Uh, my col- uh, colors that I use on projects, Anthony George. Um, but Rob was always like so uh, supportive of everyone on his uh, uh, message board, like the ones that, you know, were trying to be pros. And, you know, I would always post Coney Wave stuff and he was really receptive to it. And one day I just took a chance and I DM'd him and said, hey, I really want to work with you 
what do I need to do to uh, to get there? And uh, I wasn't even expecting an answer. But you know, sometimes you know, uh, it, you you don't wanna you won't hit a home run if you take yourself out of the game. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna throw it out there and see what happens. Sure. And uh, yeah, surprisingly enough, Rob uh, messaged me back, and it was just a short answer, and he said, "Don't worry, Mark. One day we will." And I was like. Okay, I mean it, it's nothing definite, but it was pretty cool. And then, um, and then, like months later, uh, I got a call. It was a, uh, it was uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, I want to say it was Thanksgiving two thousand and six or seven. I can't, I can't remember pinpoint the the year, but it uh, it was early in the morning, and I got a call on my cell phone. I didn't recognize the uh, the number. Usually, I just let it go straight to voicemail. Uh, but I was like, uh, for some reason, I answered it. And I said, hello. On the other end, I heard, Polton, it's Liefeld. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And he was like, hey, I, I hope it's okay, but I, I asked one of the guys on the message board for your phone number. And I was like, no, man. And uh, we talked for two hours. And when I say we talked, he talked for two hours, and I just went, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> um, like, that, that's the thing with Rob. He, he can talk. I mean, if you ever listen to his podcast, he, you know, he's a, a fountain of information and, you know, uh, super charming guy. And, uh, he just, he just talked my ear off and was telling me, uh, of, of things he wanted to do. Uh, he wanted, most importantly, he wanted to bring, uh, his book from the nineties, Evangeline back. And he wanted me to be the writer of it because he, um, was such a fan of my work on, on Coney waves. And, so yeah, I think it was uh, 2007, and I was like, "Oh man, this is awesome." So, but eventually, it didn't come out until 2011. So right. that was like four years of um, never giving up and like reminding him, like, "Hey, we still need to do Evangeline." Uh, to the point where uh, he he nicked me, named me the squeaky wheel because <laughs> <laughs> because I, I wouldn't I wouldn't give up uh, on it. But I mean, during those four years, he gave me like a bunch of things uh, to work on. Um, some got published, uh, some things didn't, but I, I got to be part of uh, Image United number two. I um, scripted the, the Blood Strike backup story in it, nice. which is amazing because uh, Image United, although it was uh, uh, never completed, uh, my issue came out and I got to be in a comic book with like all my heroes, McFarlane, uh, you know, Liefeld, Silvestri. Um, so it was super awesome. Uh, and you know, then he, in uh, 2010, he relaunched Brigade, and I scripted that, and uh, that was amazing. Uh, I got to do a, uh, you know, did a signing for it at San Diego Comic Con uh, 2010, um, and, and it came out like right around the same time my son was born. So uh, it was just a, an awesome experience. And, and then eventually, 2011, <laughs> eventually comes out, and. Uh, you know, it, it's one of the, the, the highlights of, uh, you know, my, my mainstream career because, you know, Rob was such a cool boss to work for. He just kind of like, you know, he had one story he wanted to tell and he had me tell it. And then he was like, he just handed the reins of the book over to me and let me pretty much run wild with it and do whatever I wanted with it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to give a shout out to the artist of the book, Owen Jenny. Um, he was like amazing to work with it's like one of those things um I, I love like a true collaboration when i work with people i want my artists to to have input too so like owen would throw out ideas and he was like hey, you know I, I i know you already wrote it like this but what if you thought that and i was like oh that's cool because it gets me thinking about new things and it was just a, such a great great experience and, and plus like owen is an incredible artist his pages were just absolutely beautiful and you know it just uh you know it, it, and it just kept getting better because then uh you know i i work a day job I, i've never given up working my day job and uh one day i was i was at it and uh you know every now and then i would check my phone for messages and i had a message from rob and he was like hey i'm working at dc they want me to take on more books thinking about you uh writing hawkman with me what do you think <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're like gee let, you know what i need to sleep on this one rob <laughs> yeah so i was like yeah definitely i'm on board i love hawkman uh you know strangely enough the very first sketch i got at a comic con was uh 
Hawkman by uh, Steve uh, Steve Lieber. So I was like, oh, it's, it's meant to be. So I, I told Rob I was on board, and then I didn't hear anything for like two months. <laughs> and like, like you know, I was like, hey, is this happening? And Rob just didn't even answer me. He yeah. didn't even respond back. And that's sometimes how it is with Rob. And then one day, um, he finally answered answered me back and said, hey. DC is going to contact you to get all your information to get you on payroll. We're going to get started on this. Yeah, so we got started on uh, Hawkman on the new 52, and it it was amazing. Um, you know, because you know, not only was I you know writing the book with Rob, but we had uh, Joe Bennett as the artist. Yeah. And you, if you go back like my Extreme Studios fandom, Joe was uh, the artist of Supreme. Uh, Art T. Bear was the inker and artwork that's. Uh, extreme too but you know he did cable and x-men and and so many classic marvel books um it was just like a dream team for me and uh you know uh i i got to visit the dc uh office when they were in new york i uh, got a tour of it um mike martz you know he was like the the head editor editor there and i got introduced to him and he was like mark uh uh we, we started with issue nine he was like issue nine is the best hawk man uh, issue yet I was like oh yeah this is awesome <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah Mike Marks is a really nice guy he used to work at Marvel he was like a group editor of X-Men in the around the time I met you I think um, yeah but he's a super awesome guy and yeah and seeing like I said I think at that time I was on Nerd Nation radio with my friend Gene we he, like I was his co-host and we had you on to talk about Hawkman and I just remember after that Gene was like me and Gene were like little kids like we, we were trying to hold it together while talking to him I'm like yeah it's my friend I shouldn't be so nervous but I'm like it's my friend and he's writing Hawkman you know we, we were so excited and uh, it was so nice to you know see you hit that level and then and even the stuff like all the stuff you're doing now is is, is still top-notch stuff like I feel like you working with Rob working with your hero getting a lot of ideas out there I'm sure you learned a lot and then you went on and did um, a cat named Haiku, and you've done, um, you know, the pizza tree with your with your son, and co- collaborating a lot with your son on characters like Sea Dog and things like that. What's it, you know, now that you've done worked in the industry, worked your way up in industry, got you know worked at DC, worked at Image, worked with all your heroes. Um, I'm sure, obviously, you would still love more of that to happen with you know with your heroes and stuff. But what's it like doing things for yourself? Because I, you know, people, I don't have a lot of guests on my show that have done both so like you know what's some of the joy of working with your son bringing these stories to life and working on personal projects that you've always wanted to do because i know you've been talking about graveyard shift for years i mean i i since my aneurysm i think uh you know you uh i talked to you about that like in early 2011 that you were like oh i have this idea i want to make it and so what's it like doing personal projects versus um something for a big company like dc um so <laughs> it, it, it's hard to explain, but it's like, it's so much more rewarding. Like when I was doing uh, Hawkman at DC and Evangeline at Image, I thought like, you know, it doesn't get any better than this. And and I know if like from doing comic cons, people always be like, oh, when you're, when are you going back to DC? And I was like, you know, I don't know if I would ever go back because I'm having so much fun now. Um, it's it's incredible especially to uh like incorporate my son in, into uh into my work uh i mentioned in 2010 uh he was he was uh he was born around the same time uh brigade came out and the same time uh a cat named haiku came out i remember i was doing a a signing at the arcana booth i was holding uh chase <laughs> in my one arm and then i was uh signing and sketching copies of uh a cat named Haiku for for fans, and it was just it was just amazing uh, time. And then as the years went on, Chase just became um, I, comics have been such a part of his life that it's just normal for him. He's like accompanied me to cons and in store signings, and soon he just started drawing my characters. And he d- did a drawing of a cat named Haiku and. You know, I, I thought it was the greatest thing, um, and I, I, I had my color, so I was like, hey, you, you can you color this up for me? I want to put it in the book, and it, you know, it, his, his little drawing of Haiku when we did the hardcover collection, I think that got more, like, uh, praise than anything, uh, <laughs> just because it was so adorable that, you know, this four-year-old, um, you know, 
drew his dad's character, but then he just, you know, it just keep kept getting uh, progressing and getting even bigger. Like he started coming up with his own characters and his own ideas. And one one day we were out having having uh, dinner. Uh, we were just at like getting pizza at a pizza place, and he was like, uh, he was four years old, and he was like, Dad, I know where pizza comes from. I was like, Oh yeah, where? And he was like, Oh, it's easy. You take a slice of pepperoni. You bury it in the, in the ground and a pizza tree grows and i was like oh my god that's the greatest thing ever <laughs> that needs to be that needs to be a book and uh you know just how indie comics are it, they take forever uh, uh to make especially when you're working a day job but we uh, that's how our book pizza tree came about and we um we we did that um i originally so chase and i wrote it and I, and i i originally drew it and I, I loved this story so much. I was like, oh, we need a better artist than me. So um, uh, one of my friends introduced me to uh, Ryan Onorado, who ended up drawing the book. Mm-hmm. And I, I showed him all the, I had all these, you know, stack of 11 by 17 artboards with the, the whole book drawn. And he was like, you know, this isn't that bad. And it's kind of similar to my style. What if I just ink over it in, in my style? I was like, yeah, whatever you can do to make it, <laughs> make it look better. And, uh, he did it and it looked fantastic he colored it and um i don't know i I just i never had a a book that was so uh universally loved like pizza tree like we got a ton of great reviews um we were nominated for a ringo award uh chase and i got to go to the to the award ceremony uh it was awesome you know they, they give you uh like special badges that say um nominee and they you get like a special pin, like you're part of a, you know, a secret club and chase had one. And like everyone was given chase. Cause he's like this little seven year old, these weird looks. I was like, are you wearing your dad's badge? Uh, and I would be like, no, he, he got nominated. He co-wrote, <laughs> he co-wrote pizza tree and people are like, what? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's incredible just to see him like become so passionate about these things. Um, but yes, it, it, it's amazing. I, and you know, it, it eventually got to the point cause he sees me doing these, um, these like more, you know, not really adult, but I guess more like mainstream type, uh, comic books like graveyard shift and, uh, uh, you know, eventually and he, and finally he, he had it and he was like, dad, we need to do, I'm tired of doing kitty books. We need to do cool books like Graveyard Shift. I was like, yeah, we can do we can do like a superhero book. And uh, he 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 and I we created this character um, Sea Dog, which, which we've crowdfunded. But also he like he drew me this Snake Man monster that you know had chains wrapped around his wrist. His tongue was a three headed snake. And I was like, this is amazing. And I took a picture of it and I put it on Facebook. And the artist that I was uh, working on another project with, US Assassin, he saw it and he was like, oh my God, that's the coolest thing. He needs to be in the book. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he ended up he ended up being like the main villain in the book. His name's Slither. And, uh, you know, Chase is a genius. We were playing Legos and we. You know, we were just, we've taken all his Lego figures and mixing them up. Like we were putting like Aquaman's body on, on, uh, uh, on, uh, Cyborg, Cyborg's head on Aquaman's body and creating all these different characters. And then we took, a he had this like, uh, German shepherd Lego figure and we stuck a bazooka on his back and bazooka dog was created. And so <laughs> bazooka dog's a character in, in U.S. Assassin. So all, all his little crazy ideas were, were making into, characters but it's working it's just i don't know we, we we just make fun comics and and people really seem to uh seem to take to it so it's it's so getting back to your original question like it's cool to work on corporate comics for for like a, for big ips but there's a lot of uh things you can and can't do like there's a lot of things you can't do with what chase and i are doing and what i'm doing with my own books like you know the world's our oyster we can do whatever we want with these because you know we're the owners we, we we're the we're the uh ip uh holders so you know if, if we want to put a dog make a dog that has a giant bazooka popping out of his back we can do that you know we can make a a, a, a monster with a three-headed snake for a tongue you know no one's telling us no <laughs> yeah that's that's awesome and you're right that is that is the fulfilling part of like 
oh, wow, we don't have to really answer to anybody. Like, if we think it's a good idea, we figure out a way to make it work. And that's that's awesome. Yeah, so there's a little less – I mean, I'm sure there's there's obstacles in both. I mean, I know from experience and I know you know there's obstacles in doing both and there's rewards for doing both, whether it's corporate or, or personal. But hearing you say, like, how much fun you're having, especially with Chase and all these ideas, it. I mean, I haven't stopped smiling. Just hearing all this is freaking awesome, dude. Um, and I'm, I'm so happy that uh, – we have essentially who, uh, what may be our next Stan Lee and Chase Poulton, which would be great. Um, so just someone who just gets, can sit in an office and come up with any ideas all day, which is awesome. Um, so you do an U.S. Assassin. Uh, you did that with Mike uh, McMahon, right? Um, yeah. And then you do um, Graveyard Shift. So let's talk about those two books, and, and you can pick which order you want to go in. Tell us a little bit about those two books. Um and, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about crowdfunding and, and kind of the impetus for this. Because, like I said, I think back in – I know I got in touch with you soon after I was sick, like when I was out of the hospital. So I know I reached out to let people know I, know I was okay. And you were you and Chrissy were two people who were like, hey, you know, thanks for, um, you know, letting us know, keeping us updated. We're good. You know, Ch- I think Chase was born at that point. So, um, so you guys were telling me about – you know about being parents which was awesome and then into um 2011 you were you were telling me about this graveyard shift idea so how did these two ideas finally materialize and how good does it feel to have graphic novels for both of these in people's hands yeah so yeah graveyard shift started a long time ago like it first started uh the idea in uh 2010 um I mentioned the Rob Liefeld board and how I made so many friends and uh, people that I would go on to to work with. One of those people was John Malin. So after I did Brigade uh, Number One with uh, Rob Liefeld, I, w- I was feeling really confident and uh, you know good about myself. And John Malin was an artist who had worked with Rob on uh, some books that I was a big fan of, and I- I'd known him. I- I- at this point, I had known him for a couple of years, so I figured. I'm going to just reach out to him, take a chance. Like I, you know, like I've said before, and I messaged him and said, Hey, I have this idea. It's called graveyard shift. It's basically universal monsters meets the X-Men. And, uh, he responded back and he was like, a lot of people want me to draw their comic mark, but you're the first person that asked me to draw monsters. So I'm in. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, so, so it started 2010 and, uh, it wouldn't come out until uh eight years later and it was just like every you know it it just you know it's a passion project when you know you start it 10 years or 10 years ago and then it finally comes out but you know john and i we were busy working on it and i showed it to to rob liefeld because you know you know john and i both worked for him so i thought he would get a kick out of it and he flipped out over a graveyard shift he was like mark uh, i love this uh at the time, he was like, uh, I'm flying off to, uh, to talk for a meeting with Robert Kirkman. When I get back, I'm going to help you guys set this up at Image. I'm like, oh, my God, we, we made it. <laughs> and so I told John. And then, like, a couple days later, uh, Rob gets back from his from his trip. And I and apparently, I guess his trip was uh, to talk about uh, reintroducing the extreme uh, line at Image. Mm-hmm. Um, it had already started a little bit with Evangeline, but this was going to be, like, a, a full – uh, relaunch and uh, one of those books was Youngblood and Rob was like now Mark I know I said I was going to help you guys with um, uh, with Graveyard Shift but I think that John sh- John's the artist that I need for the new Youngblood and he, and, and he asked for my blessing and I'm not going to uh, you know block my friend from this great opportunity so uh, I was like no no definitely go ahead and ask John, you know, this will be big for him. So uh, Graveyard Shift got put to the side while John worked on uh, Youngblood for about a year. And then from there, um, we started back working on uh, Graveyard Shift again. And then John showed Graveyard Shift to an editor at Marvel, and he got work at Marvel uh, doing, I think, uh, New Warriors at the time. So Graveyard Shift got pushed to the side again. Uh, After a stint on... uh, new warriors ended you know we still worked on it in our spare time um you know i was i was working a day job as always john was doing construction so the hours for him were very limited um and then he showed some of the new pages to marvel again and that's when he got like uh i forget what it was i think it started with thunderbolts 
he, he did Thunderbolts and then he did Cable. He was at Marvel for a long time. So, you know, Graveyard Shift got pushed to the side again. Right. And then <laughs> it always got it got, always got put on the back burner. And then uh, he finally left Marvel and he was like, the, you know, the time is right for, for Graveyard Shift. And we, we launched it uh, 2018. And I remember when we launched it on Indiegogo, I was so nervous. We were asking for $5,000. And uh, John was like, you know, if we don't hit a goal mark, you and I will just put in the rest of the money. And yeah, I remember telling my wife, and she was like, "What? <laughs> where do you, where do you think you can get that money from?" <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, I don't know. I'll 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 sell some baseball cards or something." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we we launched it, and like within, I don't know. I think it was like I think the first one within thirty minutes we hit our $5,000 uh, goal and it, it was such a great feeling. And it, it went on to, uh, to make, I think like $106,000 on Indiegogo. Ooh, yeah. So it was amazing. Yeah. We had over 2000 backers. Um, and then, you know, fulfilling that, you know, we fulfilled it from my house and, oh man, John came in, he signed all the books and, and did his sketches but then he had to get back to Michigan and it was up to me to, to ship out those 2000 books and man, working a day job and, and, and doing all that, it, it was, it was uh, pretty taxing, but I made it through it. And I think I figured out how to, I figured out a process of, on how to get these books out uh, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, but, but from there it just got bigger. We, the, the following year we launched uh, graveyard shift two and that did even bigger. We did $174,000. Um, the, the book is was getting like such a buzz. You would go on eBay and you would find, you know, the the, the issues of it. The first printing selling for over a hundred dollars. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, and and what, I, this time John fulfilled Graveyard Shift too. So I flew out to Michigan. I signed all the books. Uh, he mailed. He shipped them out. He um, I think he got through it in. He he got through it a little quicker than I did. Um, uh, he he had more help though. Um, but as soon as we uh, finished fulfilling volume two, we launched volume three. And by then, like, we were building such a great, um, like, fan base and buzz about us and, the, and, and, and great customer service because people were getting their books, like, in a, in a pretty timely fashion. And the quality was top notch. Like, we used, like, the, the thickest paper, uh, you know glossy hard stuff uh, card stock for the covers uh people were really flipping out on the quality of these books so we launched volume three and in the first day uh first 24 hours we did ninety thousand dollars on indiegogo and it was just it's just amazing like you never you know when i released coney waves back in 2006 i was just happy to have my name on a comic book and i was like well you know if this is all that happens you know that's that's great but to to come this this far, and now you're like almost making a hundred thousand dollars in one day in sales on your book, uh, no, on a book that I, I'll add every publisher passed on. We shopped this around, you know, all the years that John and I were working on it. Uh, you know, Rob Rob's a busy guy, so unfortunately, you know, he didn't help us get into to Image, but Image uh, passed on it. Dark Horse passed on it. Uh, IDW, um, and then even like the smaller companies passed on it. So to like to achieve all this on your own is just even so much rewarding, and it, it, it tells you like as long as you're passionate about it, and you can like build this this fan base, you know, you can you can do this on your own. You can accomplish you know you know anything. And you know, volume three is you know, we're, we're we're ending the first thirty days of the, the campaign. And we're like almost at one hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and we're going to extend it another thirty days. And it, who knows how big this is going to be? But we're going to probably surpass you know our total for volume two in half the time. So it, it, graveyard shift just get, keeps getting bigger and bigger. And you know, I had the opportunity. We do um, like some of the cool things we do. Like we give up and coming uh, talent uh, artwork because there's our you know work it writing and drawing uh, comics because um, it's just not the main book uh, 
from me and John. There's also a supplemental book where it has a bunch of short stories where we hire new talent. Right. Um, and like the the first uh, supplemental book, we got we brought on ta- talent who went on to um, crowdfund their own books, and their books are like bringing in like seventy thousand dollars. And this is like first time creators, you know, doing this, and it, it, it's it feels good to like play a part in the, in their career and get them off to a great start um with volume three bringing in uh, more talent uh and chase got to work with me we, we wrote a little graveyard shift story um little graveyard shift is kind of like our team our team titans go version of graveyard shift so you know you got something for the for the parents and then something for their for their kids if they want to back a, a higher tier and it's just been so amazing and uh with volume two, we had we had a stretch goal of one hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and everyone was like, "No way, you're going to hit that!" <laughs> and if we hit one hundred seventy thousand um, dollars, we were going to give every backer a copy of my book, uh, U.S. Assassin, which was an eighty-page graphic novel. It was the biggest book I- included in the campaign, and that's a book that you know Mike and Mike McMahon and I have been working on for a few years. And Mike is, you know, good friends with not only me, but John. Uh, he likes to say he's the very first Graveyard Shift fan because back in, like, 2011, I guess, when John and I first started working on Graveyard Shift, we went to a Wizard World in Philadelphia, and we put out a Graveyard Shift ash can. Super rare. But Mike was there with us, and, you know, he said he was there from the start. So, you know, we wanted to, to help him out. And so we thought, oh, how cool would it be? You know, if we could include his book, U.S. Assassin, as a freebie for everyone, if we hit this amazing goal, and, and we, you know, we compensated Mike for it. Um, but like on the last day of the campaign, we were like thirty-five thousand dollars away, and everyone was messaging me saying, "Oh, are you going to do a U.S. Assassin campaign? Because it doesn't look like you guys are going to hit it." I said, "Just wait, just wait." And uh, I don't know. I just had this feeling that you know the fan base was going to come up big, and they did, and we hit. We ended up doing one like 174, uh, so everyone got a free copy of Graveyard uh, of U.S. Assassin. Um, we just did a, a second chance campaign for anyone who missed it, uh, so we sold a couple more. I'm actually uh, before you called, I was uh, bagging and boarding those copies, and I'm going to send them out this weekend. And then Mike and I are going to, you know, launch a Volume Two campaign. The book's already done. Uh, that's one of the like luxuries of you know doing something like. Uh, graveyard shift that's so successful i can invest it in these other projects and wait till they're actually done and then you know do the crowdfunder so that the, the fans don't have to wait you know so long to get their books it can be like an instant turnaround and i just hope hope it just builds more goodwill and you know great customer service that people are like oh we're getting these books super quick you know mark's a guy we can can trust i, I want to get everything he puts out that's great, and you have been. I mean, to, to launch something like this yearly and to deliver on it yearly is uh, is quite impressive. Graveyard Shift is such a freaking cool idea. It's like one of those things where you're like, how come no one thought of this before? And, and it's so funny to hear you say, I pitched this to everyone, and yet everyone that I pitched it to ultimately said no to it. They, I mean, to me, I feel like if I was an editor that said no to this, I don't know why I would say no to this. And <laughs> I was an editor for years. If an idea like this came to me and I could have made it happen, I would have made it happen. And seeing it succeed now, it was clearly was meant to come out in this way. So before we leave, could you give everyone a pitch for Gra- Graveyard Shift and and uh, kind of help sell that uh, you know that Indiegogo you have going right now? Because I want to see that go over two hundred thousand. I want to see that one climb. So uh, so yeah, take it away. Yeah, so Graveyard Shift, it's what if the Universal Monsters were the X-Men? You know, we have all our, you know, classic monsters. We have a vampire. We have, you know, a Frankenstein monster type, the Bride of Frankenstein, a werewolf. You know, but it's all reimagined. And, you know, there are scientists who were tricked by the evil corporation uh, they worked for to be to be turned into these monsters that they were creating. And, you know that they're framed as terrorists so how do they get back at this evil corporation you know that did this to them well they they become terrorists and go on the attack and uh you know it's you know 
my my wheelhouse is 90s x-men i love my jim lee and, and chris claremont run um so you know we're, we're bringing that back uh someone once said this is the best uh x-men book in the in the last uh you know 30 years and that was like high praise for me because that's that's what i that's what i was trying to to create but yeah it just keeps getting uh, bigger um and you know this the store started with volume one and we're we're doing volume three right now but you can get all three volumes in this campaign and just know that this is building to a, a bigger thing john and i have like the first six volumes mapped mapped out so we're in this for the long haul uh, there's plenty of great rewards besides the, you know, the the first three volumes. There's supplemental books where you can go, you know, deep dive into the uh, graveyard shift universe because it's not just you know the graveyard shift characters, but there's other heroes that inhabit this world, and we're exploring this world that we're creating. Um, there's there's stuff for the kids. A uh, little graveyard shift that I write with Chase. Um, you can get, uh, you know, prints, trading cards. T-shirts, you know, we have all the bases covered for it. We're we're, we're building a big, a big brand here, and uh, hopefully you guys are excited about it as I am. Yeah, please, guys, go check this out. And I'm actually going to have my review of Volume One uh, probably going up a week after this episode goes up on my Seek and Destroy show, and uh, and I'll make sure I send you a link to that too, Mark, when it goes up. And I'll definitely review Volume Two and the supplemental stuff a- a- as well. And then at some point, I'll also review U.S. Assassin. And uh, yeah, I mean, Mark, you know, not only am I a big you know, I'm a friend of yours, obviously, and we have been for 15 years now almost, but uh, I'm always going to be a fan of yours too. And I always love seeing you succeed and to te- to team up with these talented people to make this book and to see Graveyard Shift, this, like you said, this idea that you've had that you've wanted to do, reach this level and build this brand. It's very exciting and I'm very excited for you. So thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to come here and tell us about it, to talk about us, you know, talk about your history in comics, your love of comics and, uh, you know, you know, the stuff you create. It's, it's been a blast and it, it meant so much to have you here, man. Oh, no, it's my pleasure, man. Uh, we need to do this more often, man. It was good talking to you. Absolutely, yeah, well, for sure. Like, uh, <laughs> so it's funny, I said uh, to my friend Gene the other day, we did a show together, and it was like a random uh, show where we were talking about DC stuff, and he's like, why don't we do this anymore? And I go, I know, man. Like, I'm, I'm working on it. Like, I, I have a, like you, I work a regular job, too. I never gave up regular jobs uh, as well, and so it's like you got, you know, you, you grind, you burn the candle from both ends, but... It's uh, it's good to see that the candles are working, uh, that you're you're lighting this new path, and I'm excited. And everyone out there, please, I'm going to put links to his uh, Twitter down below, his uh, his go- his Indiegogo. Like, please go support this. You know, he's just said he's going to add another 30 days onto it. So by the time you're listening to this, there should still be a few weeks left. Please go check it out. It's an awesome, awesome idea. And that's actually how Mark reached out to me about this and why he's on the show was because right before I deleted social media, which I'm not on Twitter or Instagram anymore, right before I did, I was complaining about how bad I hated the X-Men comics. And Mark was like, hey, if you want something that's X-Men related, you should check out Graveyard Shift. And I was like, you know, I remember that book and I remember you talking about it. And I go, and I I'd never read it. And so you're like, don't worry, man, I got gotcha. you. And I'm like, well, I will review everything. I'll give my honest opinion. And uh, so far I've read volume one and I got to say, man, I really dig it. And you are, you filled that hole that was there. I'm, I'm reading classic X-Men stuff right now and graveyard shift. And that is scratching my X-Men itch. So thank you. And John uh, Malin and all the talented people you work with for putting this book out. I got to say, man, it's top notch stuff. And I'm so excited to see you succeed in it. Oh man, thank you. Uh, that means a lot, especially coming from like a an old school X Men uh, X Men fan. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. And if you don't believe I'm an X Men fan, check out my arm. I got N Sabanor. Uh, my arm is all riddled with X Men stuff. So, um, so thank you, Mark. Uh, thanks for making the time. And everyone, go support his stuff. I love this guy. He's been a dear friend of mine for years, and he's one of the nicest people I've ever met in the industry. He's one of the most um, caring and and. Uh, empathetic people I've met in real life, uh, you know, and he's also pushes, like he says, you know, he's, it's not just talk. He try, you know, he helps other people, um, you know, build themselves up and, you know, and, and you're just a, you're a leader, man. And it's so great to see you lead this next generation of creative people to the top with you. It's awesome. Oh, thanks, man. I, I'm just paying it forward. I was fortunate enough that, you know, someone like Rob Liefeld, uh, took an interest in me and helped me, uh, same with Sean O'Reilly uh, taught me so much. So, you know, if I can pay it forward, uh, it, you know, it's the least I can do. 
That's awesome. Well, Mark, thanks again for being here, and we'll catch you. We'll definitely do this again for sure. Sounds good.